The Full Time Review is supported and brought to you by Saltire Energy, the global market leader in specialist drilling equipment rental. And also, I'm absolutely delighted to announce that ABTV is now supported by Craig International, game-changing procurement efficiency trusted by the global energy industry. With offices worldwide, Craig International continues to be a market leader. After what was another worrying performance, Aberdeen have now gone five games without a win in the league for the first time since season 1999-2000. Our winless run at Tynecastle continues. Final score yesterday, Hearts 2, Aberdeen 0. It means this in terms of the table. We are joint bottom with St Johnston. Our next game is obviously on Thursday in the Conference League and then we face back-to-back -back games against Ross County starting on Sunday and then we have a League Cup game to watch on the following Wednesday. Good evening everybody. A very warm welcome to Ali Beg ABTV here on YouTube this Sunday night. Um, so... I've had a quick look at some of the comments that have already come in on YouTube tonight and it is quite obvious that there are a lot of very frustrated and angry fans out, the, out there after what was a really poor performance against Hearts yesterday. Um, look, we're going to do our best to get through it tonight. I'm going to keep it completely open to you, the fans, to have your say about the game, just as I always ask, just be very mindful about what you write in the comment section. Just please don't use the bad language and just always be respectful, which I know that you always have. So I'm very grateful to you. Um, look, let me let, let me have my, uh, my my tuppence on it in in just a moment. But let's just remind you of the team that he picked. So obviously he made two changes from the Hibs defeat. Stephen Garton Mann came in for his debut for Angus McDonald. And Leighton Clarkson came in for Connor Barron. Let's go through what Barry said after the game. So he said, we weren't at our best defensively and we weren't at our best going forward. We lacked a bit of cohesion. I don't think there was much in the game in the first half. Second half, we changed to 4-3-3 and I thought we were the better team for the first 10 or 15 minutes without being brilliant. He did go on to say, though, after Hearts got their second goal, that for him, that was the game done. So, obviously, there's there's lots to go through. Um, and I'm, I'm going to start reading the comments in just a moment, but there's a few things that I'd like to address. Um, so, th this is where I'm at at the moment. And I'm sure many of you are also maybe at this stage. I know some of you have gone already, you've already been tipped over the edge. So I'm not quite at the tipping point just yet, but I have to be honest, I'm not far off. Um, so yesterday, I want to clear something up that I said on the big Saturday football show on North Sound, because I, at the end, it is my duty on the show to obviously report as I see it and to make sure that editorially, I get across all the points about where Aberdeen are. So I sort of listed all our negative points yesterday. And then I was asked um, an opinionated question, a question that was seeking my personal opinion about whether I thought Barry should be sacked now, as in straight after the game. And I said, no. So I wanted to clear that up because some folk believed that I was being a little bit hypocritical. I wasn't. What I was doing was I was calling the editorial points, which was putting everything into context about how poor we are at the moment. But when asked an opinionated question, I'm going to give my personal opinion, and it is my personal opinion at the moment, that I, Barry should not get sacked now. Absolutely not. It doesn't do us any good whatsoever. We cannot just keep sacking managers willy-nilly. It's not healthy for the players, for the board, for us, the fans, and the club as a whole. And I think it, be, it could have the potential to become a very dangerous ground if we start just chopping and changing managers whenever we go on bad runs. 
So I'm not, I'm not going to teach you to suck eggs here. I'm not going to try and be patronizing in any way, shape or form. But he still does need that time. But our patience and my patience is very much starting to wear thin here because the excuses, and they were excuses in his post-match interview yesterday with Rob McLean, I felt was very ill-advised. Now, again, this is just a personal opinion and this is what I think should be happening. So there is... A, as a, as a senior football producer who has worked in sports broadcasting for many, many years, I'm going to tell you a little story about something and I, I just want to put it all into context so that you fully understand where I'm coming from here. So when I first joined Manchester United Television, Sir Alex Ferguson pulled me to one side and he, he knew me through my late grandfather. I've told you the story a thousand times. I'm not going to go over that ground again. And he said to me, part of your job is to protect me and to protect the players as a host on Manchester United TV. That is your role. You are representing the football club on one of our media outlets. So the reason that I'm trying to put that story into context with Barry is that I feel there needs to be, from the football club, a little bit more protection around him. And when I say that, I'm talking about his PR and his communication in post-match interviews. Now, he is, at the end of the day, still a rookie manager. Now, he's got experience talking in front of cameras when he was a player and all that sort of stuff. But it's a completely different kettle of fish when you become the manager, particularly when you're a manager under pressure and you have microphones thrown under your chin 10 to 15 minutes sometimes 20 minutes after a game when emotions are still very much running high. So this is what I think should be happening. I think there should be a debrief with somebody who is a PR representative or somebody who is a communications re representative at the football club, whoever it is. And they should be just taking five minutes before any sort of post-match interview and saying, right, how are we going to address this tonight? What are your thoughts about what you're going to say? And have you thought about what you're going to say? And then I think that experience from a communications and PR side should be put to Barry and Barry then takes that forward. For me, it's about protection. Because his post-match interview last night was not the best. Again, he spoke about the hacking game. Mate, it, you know... It's gone. It's over. Uh, it's long gone. Um, talked about the beginning of the season. Forget it. And the difficulty about at the beginning of the season. It doesn't matter anymore. What matters is what happened on the football pitch yesterday. And these are the questions that need to be answered. So, and even actually said in his post, I'm not trying to make excuses, but... Um, he said, you know, that that's roughly where we are. And I'm sorry, but they are excuses. And it's not what we want to hear at the moment. And I don't think it is doing Barry any favours. So this is where I think it's just... Because yesterday was not great. It was, in fact, it was absolutely appalling. Um, I've made a few notes about where I felt we were. Um, and, I, and I really hope you agree I'm going to open it to the floor in just a moment. So, obviously, we handed Hearts the initiative by playing three at the back. And Stephen Naismith, to his great credit, saw it straight away and totally capitalised on what were our weaknesses. Our ball retention yesterday was absolutely dreadful because of the formation that we were playing. We were so careless in possession. Now, um... I've been sent the video of the sports scene analysis and thank you so much for, for taking the time to send it to me so that I could have a look at it because obviously a lot of you were talking about it. And Neil McCann is absolutely spot on with his analysis as much as it pains me to say. <laughs> um, but he was. He absolutely got it right about how we played in, our, in the opening 45 minutes before Barry changed it to a four in the second half. Um, and, what, and, and where we all 
saying off the same hymn sheet is why is he persistently playing with three at the back? Yesterday, we were all pleading for him not to do it. This hoofball is absolutely killing us. And it's killing our creative players like Leighton Clarkson. Leighton is a shadow of the player that he was when he came on loan last season because of the way that we're setting up. It's absolutely killing him. Um, the front two, they are so detached from the rest of the team that it's absolutely frightening. Um, I, look, I, 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 there's not much I can say about the top two because there's no service. Um, what, what, you know, what did we expect from them? Um, one minute Duke's over here, the next minute he's over there. When Papai Gay came on, I, I don't know what position he was playing. Um, I, I don't know what instructions he was given, but he's not a right winger. And it appeared to me that he was playing sort of on the flank. He needs to be playing central, up front, um, as, a, as almost a target man, not where he was, not where, where he was deployed when he came on. Um, also, what I'm, I, I'm, I'm a bit worried at the moment about our, our lost character and spirit that absolutely got us through to Europe last year and helped us finish third. Um, that's becoming a serious issue for me as well because the team just look so detached from each other. Um, so look, that that's basically what I've had to say. Um, I, I kind of hope you're with me. I hope you fully understand where I'm coming from, um, particularly about what I was saying about um, Barry's post-match interviews and where I just think he it, it, it just needs to be so much more careful about what he's talking about. So that's where I'm at. Okay, so let's now open this to you. The, look, we have no time limit tonight, so we can go at it for as long as you like and as long as the comments come in. This part of the show... It's called Red All Over. So, Kaiser's on, and uh, Kaiser is not happy, not happy at all, as, as many as you are. So, look, I'm going to read these comments out, okay, and then you can make of it as you will. But again, just be mindful how you, how you respond. So, Kaiser has said, what an absolutely disgraceful, disjointed mess. Um, he, he went on to say, it's just a follow-on from the St. Mirren and the Hibs games. Absolutely woeful. Many of you are already agreeing with him. He's also worried that Barry just won't learn. Can't be bothered, I said. It's time for Barry to go. It's excuse after excuse. It's starting to sound like Stephen Glass and Jim Goodwin. Um, Kai's went on to talk about the tiredness that Barry talks about. It's the start of the season. Um, I also do not subscribe to this tiredness at all. These guys are elite athletes with the best performance scientists in and around them. Tired, tiredness for me does absolutely not wash. It's an excuse. Um, Kaiser goes on to say, looking at the team yesterday, you would have thought that Barry and the players had never seen a football match before. Scott W is on. Hi, Scott. His interview on Open All Mics prior to the game was the last straw for me. I hate to say, saying he didn't have two weeks to work with the squad was a nonsense. So to put that into context, he basically said that last Wednesday was the first time that he had all the squad together after the international break and all the players together for the first time. Um, I must admit, I was a little bit surprised he came out and said that. I think it was the last thing that we, as a fan base, needed to hear. These are the type of things that he shouldn't be saying. And again, I reiterate the point that, I don't know, you, you, could, you could go as far as saying media training. Um, but these are the type of things he should not be saying because it just doesn't bode well with the fans. It's as simple as that. Uh, Scott W went on to say, for me, he's been told by the board to get things turned round by the end of this month. He's starting to sound exactly like Derek McInnes, Stephen Glass and Jim Goodwin a few weeks before they were sacked. Uh, can't be bothered to said, who would we bring in? But uh, look, it, Your question is, I understand your question, but I don't think we're quite at that stage yet. But listen, I'm, again, not trying to sound like a happy clapper, I fully understand the emotions, the anger, 
and the frustrations and why so many of you are already calling for his head. I totally, totally get it. But as I said, me personally, I'm not quite there yet. Uh, John Grant has said, we've got to get this defence sorted out. Whether it's with only one up front, so be it. Leaking a couple of goals every week is asking a lot of the forwards when they are on form, let alone off form. I agree. Alan Nichols says, come on, Barry, do the players understand what you want? UEFA need to help us out and allow us to have 11 goalkeepers on Thursday. Um, so if you get a moment, if you're, if you're on your commute to work tomorrow, listen to the ABZ podcast lads. They've got a Frankfurt guy on who gives us the lowdown on Eintracht Frankfurt. Now, I watched parts of the game yesterday against Bochum where they drew 1-1 in Bochum. Um, they were not great, I have to say, but I still think they're miles ahead of us. And for goodness sake, on Thursday, do not go to three at the back because we will. it will be a cricket score. It, it's dearie me. Um, but they're, I, I have to say, they are also not great at the back themselves. But And th this was something that, that troubled me a little bit yesterday about what Barry said about sort of n not doing the best in both boxes. Um, if, if I grab the match stats for you, which actually, I must admit, I was a little bit surprised about. I thought it was going to be a lot worse um, than what it was. So let me grab them. Let me chuck it in for you. And these were the match stats. So Hearts enjoyed 53% of possession to our 47%. They had 12 shots in total. We had 11. They had four on target where they obviously scored twice. And we had five on target, which I, which I must admit, I didn't think we had that many. Um, 11 fouls committed by them, 12 by us. Corner kicks won, they won nine. We only won three corner kicks in the game. So that's where we are in terms of the match stats. So let, let's keep going through your, your comments. Um, Alan Nicholas said, all other teams know how to play against us, but we don't have a clue how to play against any of them. John Grant has said, go 4-5-1 and strangle the game. Not pretty to watch, our confidence must be shattered. Um, Kaiser has asked Robson's speaking about players only meeting each other so why would he put Gunterman into a game like that I have to say I thought Stefan actually did okay yesterday and I have to admit I thought Slobodan Rubicic had his best game for us yesterday and I thought he looked a lot more assured when we went to the back four um, but I still felt that we looked unbelievably disjointed even when we did go to our back four. Um, now, this is an interesting one, okay? So a lot of folk... Um, so Scott W has, has come on and, and said this, and I've seen a few of these comments. He said that Barry was barking on about some players only meeting for the first time on Thursday. Then he plays them. Why did he not play the guys he was working with over the two-week break? There were more than 11 to work with. I actually think that is a very valid point. Um, he went on to say there were only six on international duty. There is the argument that those six are, of course, some of our best players who we would expect to start. Fraser Gunn is here. Hi, Fraser. Hope you're well, mate. Um, Defence looked nervy, midfield bypassed, but still hardly showed for the ball. Attack completely non-existent. Thought hearts were ordinary, but we made it easy for them. So predictable. He goes on to say, personally, not looking for Barry to go. However, things need to turn fast. He needs to change things. We need Steve Agnew to help with his experience. Nobody could complain if they were dropped. You see, again, it's a very interesting point because we talk about the word rookie again and where we need an experienced head. That's why he brought Steve Agnew in. So these are the times when Steve needs to step in, and he needs to almost boss Barry, and advise him, and guide him, and make him see that playing the formation that we're playing, particularly in the first half and more recently, is absolutely not working. Um, and this week, I really hope they get down to basics in, in training, and it's so many of you, particularly on my own socials, have commented about just get back to basics. 4-3-3. So many of you are calling for 4-3-3. Just get back to basics. 
Um, Paul Donaldson has wished everyone a good evening. Hi, Paul. Uh, we were quite uh, we were quite lucky that Hearts were so poor yesterday. Any other team or an on form Hearts, they could have won by four or five yesterday. Um, Alan Nicholas said the only thing in Barry's side is it's early in the season, so we should get a bit longer to sort this mess out. Yeah. Um, Kaiser has come on. He's come back to say, you know, what a Duke Miosky meant to do in a team like that. Again, it's it's a very valid point um, because when that hoof ball continues again, which we saw um, examples of on sports scene yesterday, and, and, and you know we 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 all banged on about it yesterday in the preview show, and I banged on about it in um, on the big Saturday football show on Northern, but Neil McCann was absolutely spot on, and the examples he showed were were, were great, um, and it just reiterated the point that. Kelly Roos getting the ball, humping it up the park is just not helping us whatsoever. And it has to stop. And what I don't understand, and I'm, sh I'm sure many of you have the same thinking, is why has Barry changed it when he should be getting back to doing what he did last season, which got him the job in the first place? Graham Clark is here. Hi, Graham. He's wished again everybody a good evening. Nothing much to be said from yesterday other than complete rubbish. I don't see us winning any games just now, which isn't reassuring. So obviously a big couple of weeks coming up, the big game on Thursday night, which I don't think anyone is expecting anything from. Um, then we've got Ross County, and then obviously we've got them again in the League Cup. So, you know, it, it, it's three big games. Absolutely. Um, Scott W said, we can't go on this run indefinitely. The longer we do, the lower confidence within the squad will get and the less likely we are then we are then able to get out of this hole. Graham Clark has said, Thursday was all about just enjoying the occasion rather than the result, but the way we are playing, I just see us getting embarrassed, unfortunately. Then we have County in, uh, in the cup where he also can't see a win. You see, that, that that's the problem and that, that's the dangerous ground because... Losing our confidence breeds dis discontent um, among the fan base, among the players. It just, it, it, it's just, and I keep getting back to this word, it's just not healthy. It's why it's got to be fixed, and it's got to be fixed quickly. Fraser went on to say, I thought the team looked soulless and empty, not acceptable after a two-week break for most. Like Barry, uh, like Barry, and I want it to work, but I'm sorry, what is being said in the after-match interviews is excuses. Exactly. Um, let me come back up a bit. So a lot of you are talking about, um, you know, the, the 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 red TV interview and the questions that Rob asks Barry. Now I have to be honest. I thought the questions that Rob asked him yesterday were very pertinent and relevant the, the this is the difficulty be, bear with me bear with me this is the difficulty you know I, again uh, forgive me for being so slightly self-indulgent but i've been very fortunate to have worked in club tv and in, in my in my broadcasting career and finding that balance between pulling the wool over the eyes of the fans and getting it right editorially is a very fine balancing act because at the end of the day, you are, the football club have editorial control. That's an absolute given. And the last thing that can happen is a representative of Red TV and a representative of the football club asking the manager very, very difficult questions. But what he does have to do is find the balance so that the fans don't have their intelligence taken the mick out of. And again, I was taught that very early in my broadcasting career. You must not insult the intelligence of the fan base. Um, and that's why it is a very difficult balancing act. And I have to be honest, I, I did think Rob got that balance right yesterday. Um, okay. Gosh, there are so many of you on tonight. Um, so many questions, dearie me. So Bob Duffer has, has come back to say, I'm off to Frankfurt on Wednesday. Really looking forward to the crack, but really worried about the game. Um, Bob, hopefully I'll see you there. 
Um, Scott W said, sad thing is we cannot afford to become a team who sacks managers every few months, nor can we afford to be a team who consistently hires the wrong manager. Right now, we're both of those. Paul Donaldson has said, I don't think whatever happens in Germany will determine Barry Robson's future at the club, but the next two matches against Ross County are now absolute must wins. Time is running out, time to turn things around. I, do you know, I actually, I, I agree with that. Um, you know, Thursday night is almost a, you know, it's a free hit, I think. Suze has said, understand these points, but another change in manager, can we afford it, she asks. Scott W. come back to say, we need to look abroad for the next manager. No more scraping the SPFL barrel. Um, Kevin Turner has said, does anyone else think this football strategy is failing? Okay, we're making money on players, but are we any better off for the ones that we've brought in? A lot of you are talking about the football monitoring board and a lot of you are not happy with what they're doing and how they're conducting their business, which is a fair point. Uh, Jack Bruce has said, I'm going to Frankfurt, not even thinking about the football just now, just there for the holiday. So Bob Duff has come back and he's, and, and he's asking me the question. He said, come on, Ali, no fence sitting, Barry, stay or Barry, go. So if you watch the top of the show, uh, Bob, I said at the moment, I'm not quite at my tipping point, but I'm not far off. And again, I will reiterate the point. I think chopping and changing managers is not healthy. It doesn't do us any good whatsoever. So sacking Barry now will not do us any good. He does, he does need to sort things out. Absolutely, 100% he does. He's had these players now long enough to be able to work with them. The players have been in now long enough to be able to gel and to have that camaraderie. Many other teams have bought many other players and they've not had issues. So why are we? For me, it's down to one simple thing. It's the coaching and it's the tactics that we're deploying on match days. At the moment, I'm not for Barry going, but he needs to sort it quickly because patience is running thin amongst everybody. Um, Elfie Dello has said, alarm bell starting, started to ring at Livy with constant long balls missing out in the midfield. No change in tactics since then. I agree. It's becoming a serious issue. Um, Scott W said, we'll lose on Thursday. We then have to beat County twice and get a result at Ibrox. Lose both to County and lose at Ibrox. Then he thinks it's all over. Um... Brenda Nicholas said, stop playing a back three and hoofing it up the pitch. What's the point of having a midfield as they're always bypassed? Bob Duffer, again, a lot of you are talking about Neil McCann. 11 long balls in 10 minutes. I agree. Richard McKenzie, team looked promising against Hacking. Don't know why we have gone backwards instead of improving. Uh, Adam Binney believes that the next few games are going to be brutal for us. Um... The Mad Ferret says it was grim listening in on Red TV, so God knows how bad it was actually being there. Um, a lot of you, again, so many, you, you are all singing from the same hymn sheet, which is really interesting. A lot of you are talking about Leighton Clarkson is the shadow of the player that he was last season, where... You know, when he's getting this ball so deep, this number six role that he seems to be sort of playing in, and then he's playing in the number 10 role, where is he supposed to be playing? For me, he's got to play the number 10. Um, and so many of you, thankfully, agree that he should be playing in that number 10. In that final third of the pitch, where he can be so creative for us and, and play these pinpoint passes. In fact, what he's doing now by playing this number six role, he's almost been forced into trying to play these long balls, these Hollywood passes that we keep talking about all the time, which come to absolutely nothing. It's not his preferred position. That's not the type of player that he is. Why is it that we can see it, but the coaching staff can't? It's frustrating. Um... Hayden Ritchie has asked, does Barry need an old head to help him? So what are we talking about here? Are we talking about possibly a director of football coming in? Are we talking about an assistant to come in? Let me know what you think, Hayden. 
Um, Michael Scott is here said, never angry, but very disappointed. Difficult times ahead, and I'm not sure how it can be turned around. Someone needs to step up sooner rather than later. Um, right, let's keep going down. Erica Mitchell, very, very worrying for us just now. I hope eventually Barry Robson gets things sorted out. As you said, Ali, there's no point sacking a manager just now. I'm not giving up on our team whatsoever. Suze came back to say, Hoof the ball when they don't know what else to do. It's crazy at this level. Erica Mitchell, I said, we've got to support our club through good and bad times. I, 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 I absolutely take your point, Erica, but I don't think, you know, the, the support of our football club is phenomenal and it will always be phenomenal and we will always support our club through good and bad times. Um. Sorry, guys, bear with me. Just going going through it all um honestly there's some great points Lorraine Baxter hi Lorraine I hope you're well in my opinion McCrory Ramadani and Pollock have not been replaced 13 signings quantity over quality now I, I hope I'm correct in saying this I think I I'm sure I saw something about Michael Stewart said that we've bought too many players now if you look at the amount of players that we lost we had to replace them and with Europe, we needed a very strong squad. We needed strength and depth. What I will say is that I believe, and I know that many of you are on board with this, that we've signed far too many defensive-minded players. Um, Pollock was always going to be very difficult. Rama, we've got to stop speaking about. Um, and, you know, we've lost Ross. Ross is gone. And that's what it is. Um Simon Royer said, there is no reason to be tired at the start of the season. I dread Thursday already. It could well be a cricket score. We need to have Duke on the bench. Um, Paul Donalds has said, uh, talked about the match stats. Five shots on target sounds about right. Um, we did have a few, but they were all very tame. They were, um, um, it, McGarry had a couple of efforts, didn't he? Um in the opening few minutes, and then he had a chance a little bit later on. Those are really the only two that spring to mind. Um, uh, Chill Ing has said, when going backwards towards our own goal, it's like watching Bambi on ice. It, oh, it really is. Uh, John Moore has said, why play a back three when we are away to Frankfurt on Thursday? Surely go with the four from the start in preparation. It's a good point. Um... Transmission GGB, how you doing, mate? I can't think about my team at the moment because it just hurts my head trying to work out how we are putting in performances like that yesterday. Or oh, I think we're all scratching our heads, mate. Bob, I've got all your points. I'm not ignoring your points. You're making some great points here. Just uh, let me let me get through to some of the other guys that are on. Um, but you, you, you are making great points. Um, right, just let me drag that back up. Um... So Kevin, Kevin Turner has said, at what, at what point do we change the manager? Do we stick and accept this season is going to be mediocre at best? I don't want him sacked yet, but just asking the question. Sousa said, we all got carried away with Barry's run of wins. He got the job on that basis. Was it too soon? George Jr. has said, if you turn the table upside down, then we're in a great position. I love how some of you can still retain your sense of humor. Absolutely brilliant. Um, Transmission GGB came back to say he needs to know who can get the best out of and where they should be playing. The midfield is a mess, which leaves nothing for forwards and piles more pressure on the defense. Um, yeah. Uh, Bob Duff has come back in and talked about Shinza because a lot of you are worried about Graham at the moment. Um, a lot of you are saying that he's miles off it. So we spoke about this yesterday and I think, ba I think Barry needs to deploy Graham now in front of a back four. I think he is... Because we didn't get a replacement for Hilba... I think we need to we need to deploy players who potentially could be that sort of player. And I think Shinza fits that gap. Because Graham running around all over the pitch trying to do everybody's jobs is just it's it's not helping us whatsoever. He's getting dragged out of position. We're leaving holes, we're leaving gaps, we're getting exposed. 
I think he just needs to sit in front of the back four and just patrol and let the younger lads like Leighton, like Connor, like Dante, like Jamie, like James, the younger lads who have still got their legs for 90 minutes, they do all the running. They are the energy boats as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah, that, that, that's where I'm at with Shinza. Okay, so Greg Donaldson talking about the likes of Baron, Duncan, and Paul Vago. Um, he, he believes that none of them are near good enough. We are relegation favourites based on the end of last season and the start of this. So actually, look, Connor's not found that form that he had 18 months ago. Against Sebs, I actually thought he did okay. And I must admit, I was slightly surprised he didn't get a start yesterday. I actually thought that he looked very energetic and he was trying to make things happen when he came on yesterday. I actually thought, for me, he got past marks yesterday when he came on because he, he made himself busy. Um, I Look, it's just a personal opinion. I do think there is a player in Dante, but I don't think he's ready yet. Hence why I was surprised he got the length of contract that he got. Um, Ryan... Uh, I'm not sure, I'm, uh, you know, again, I, I don't like picking on individual players because for me it's a collective, but Ryan's being brought on to a near night impossible situation where possibly someone with a little bit more experience needed to come on because when he came on, for me, he looked a little bit lost and this was the issue for me again yesterday was that most of the players looked lost yesterday because I just felt we lost our structure completely. Ah, uh, dear... Suze has asked, and again, it's an interesting point. Do we have too many cooks? Who's got the final decision on selection and recruiting? Um, Chris Andrews has come back and said, you're missing the point. It's not the players, it's the club. Same garbage for 30 years, same hangers on. Okay, just... Okay, I... Tell me what point I'm missing exactly, Chris, if, if you can. Try and come back to me before the end of the show. Because I don't like missing points. <laughs> uh, Jason Sutia said, Biggest worry for me is Barry doesn't give the bench a chance. Can't understand why he doesn't change things earlier. We aren't winning, so why not change? Yeah, okay. Guys, honestly, there are, there, there are, there are so many of you it's, um, th that are on tonight. Uh, I'm absolutely blown away and, and I hope you're enjoying it for what it's worth. Um, right, so just let me bring that down. So where are we at? TV me, we've done nearly 40 minutes. Um, so let me get rid of that because there's still a couple of little things. So obviously on Thursday, we've got this. It's our massive game against Eintracht Frankfurt in Germany, um, which I am very much looking forward to travelling to. So I'm going to go up on Thursday morning on the train. Um, so for those of you that are going, um, if you're on Twitter, have a quick look at the uh, the Aberdeen... Ugh, what is it? Is it SLO? I think that's what it's called. Sorry, bear with me. I think it's the SLO, is it? Aberdeen SLO. Oh, no. I can't remember what it is. Sorry. Um, but... On Twitter, on that site, they're posting about how to get your tickets. Um, and if you're going to Frankfurt on Thursday, you can pick up your tickets before four o'clock at O'Reilly's Bar, the Irish pub where all the fans are congregating before the game. You need to have your passport and you need to have, well, you need your passport anyway. <laughs> and you need a photo ID as well as your passport. It says passport and photo ID, but surely your passport is photo ID. Anyway, take both. Oh, to God, I don't forget my bloody photo ID. Um, so, so yeah, so don't forget that. So on Wednesday, I'm going to do a preview show um, looking ahead to that game. So let, let's let's jump on board and let's see how we... we um, we get on on, on Wednesday night because I'm really looking forward to, to speaking to you all on Wednesday as well. Um, 
So Chris has come back to me. He said, it's not about the players. The point he was making is about the manager must go. Okay, Chris, I totally get your point. Thanks for coming back and reiterating that, Matt, uh, mate, top man. Um, Susan's laughing. She says, watch this. We'll win on Thursday. <laughs> Uh, Scott W said we need to avoid an absolute mauling on Thursday if we lose 5 or 6 nil, that really won't do us any good I don't think we will lose 5 or 6 nil. I really don't um, a lot of you are sort of agreeing about what I said about uh, Shinza which so many of you are saying anyway and again Chilling has said it'd be hilarious if we go there and gob them <laughs> uh, Jason I've got your point I'll come back to you on that because I do have some thoughts on that. But I'll come back to you personally on that. Right, guys, I'm going to call it a night. So thank you so much for all your comments tonight. Thank you so much for keeping them all obviously very respectful because I know that a lot of you are extremely frustrated and angry about the beginning to our season. Um, so thank you for contributing all your opinions this evening. I've really enjoyed tonight's show. And I will see you again on Wednesday for the preview show ahead of Frankfurt. And I really hope that I see so many of you on Thursday night. And I can't wait to meet so many of you. It's going to be, uh, it's, it's going to be for me, it's going to be a great occasion. So I'm just really looking forward to, to the show on Wednesday and to seeing you all on Thursday. So guys, look, have a great week. Take good care of yourselves. And I'll see you all very soon. Stand free. <laughs>